and that worked.
Okay, we'll get started in about 30 seconds here. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Looks like there's, looks like the numbers have dropped. We must have lost some people over the Labor Day weekend. And let's see. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Okay, so looks like we're set to go. Uh, let's see, I did want to do one more thing here. Real quick. Okay, so here we are. Let me uh, start the recording. Oh, it is recording. That's good. So it's already on. Good. This and, and okay, I'm gonna move this over here. Max this out, but shrink this down. Okay, so let me share my screen and um, we will. Uh, so here's a syllabus. So we're finishing up chapter four today. And uh, I, I, so I haven't checked it. I'll have to double check it. Uh, but I, I'm hopeful there, there's one answer on chapter four, I think that's wrong. I think that's right. Or maybe it was, maybe chapter four is okay. And chapter three had one that was wrong. Yeah, I guess that's the deal. So I hopefully, so I did reset all the quizzes and um, so we'll see. Anyway, uh, there was one question still was grading wrong on chapter four, on chapter three, but I think chapter four was uh, maybe had one problem too, but hopefully all that will be fixed. So, so hopefully you'll be able to do chapter four. I think it's, it's not due until uh, Saturday. So you might want to wait. Uh, I think I set them all up so you get two chances for all of them. Um, uh, so if you've done chapter four once and you got one wrong, uh, then uh, I think there was one problem that graded wrong, but the others were fine. And then I think five is okay. So we should hopefully get back on track. Okay, um, so I'm gonna put my thing over here. Okay, and then we'll start chapter five on Friday. So what I'm gonna do today, uh, we will, uh, what we'll do today, we'll just kind of start back a little bit where we finished off. We actually finished off here, but I'm gonna go back to here. So remember what we covered uh, so far in, in uh, what we covered in chapter four are, are all the theorems of switching algebra. And so these theorems tell you everything you can do. This is it, this is all you can do. You've got six simple, uh, trivial laws, T1 through six, T for trivial. You've got four simplification laws, S for simplification. You've got three conversion laws, C1 and two, and there C2 is the dual of C1. So that's why they're listed like this. Whereas here, the duals uh, typically apply, one would be the POS farm and one's the SOP farm or whatever. And then, uh, so you have the first distributive law, the second distributive law and the multiply, multiplying and factoring theorem. And then you have De Morgan's laws and you also have the dual laws. Uh, the dual laws are the same as De Morgan's laws, except you don't, when you do take the dual, you don't invert the variables. So the dual of X, Y, Z is just X plus Y plus Z. You just invert the operators. And the dual of X plus Y plus Z is X, Y, Z. But with De Morgan's laws, you invert the variables too. So the dual, so the inverse of x, y, z, uh, x ended with y ended with c prime, invert that whole thing, you get x prime plus y prime plus c prime. <clears throat> All right. Any questions about any general questions about the, the theorems? 
And now we're going to look at, so we already looked at how to approve the second distributive law using a truth table. And again, what's, what's very powerful about this is we can, we can look at every possible. So here's the theorem. Uh, it's the uh, C2 x plus y z equals the quantity x plus y times the quantity x plus z. Well, so, so this theorem involves three variables, x, y, and z. And uh, so if we list all possibilities of x, y, and z, and, on one, and then we calculate x plus y, z, which is the left-hand side, and we compare it to x, the quantity x plus y times the quantity x plus z, they should be true. They should be exactly the same for all possible values of all the variables. Now, you can never do this in typical algebra because you have an infinite number of possible, any, a single variable can take on an infinite range of values. So uh, you can never compare all possible values. It's just way beyond possibility. But here you can, because we only have eight combinations. And for all eight combinations, x plus y has exactly the same value as the quantity x plus y times the quantity x plus z. So it proves that it's true. Now you can do it other ways too. You can use you can use your other rules of switching algebra and prove it as well. But the truth table is a really nice way to do it because it's very straightforward and it's either true or it's not. And usually we create additional columns. So here we have x plus y z. So we create a y z column and then we just or that with x. So here x is zero. Here this is zero, so it's zero. Here x is zero. This is zero, so it's zero. Here x is zero and this is zero, so it's zero. Here x is zero, but y, z is one, so it's one. And then for the next four, x is one, so it doesn't matter what y, z is, it's one. So you have zero, 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 one, 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 one. And here you have this quantity ended with this quantity. So zero ended with zero, 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 zero ended with one is zero, one ended with zero is zero, but one ended with one all the way down is one. And you wind up with zero 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 one 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 one, and you wind up here with the same thing zero 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 one 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 one. So it proves this identity. It proves that x plus y z equals x plus y quantity times the quantity x plus z. Okay, and here we did the same thing with the multiplying and factoring theorem. Um, again, the the we're, what we're trying to prove is that x prime plus y quantity times x plus z equals xy plus x prime z. And sometimes what we'll do for the multiplying and factoring uh, is well, we draw little lines under them. So let me, uh, let me show you that because that's kind of cute. So if you have, so if you have xy plus x prime z, so we draw a line, we draw a line under the y and the z. So we're going to do x, we're going to do x prime plus y quantity, and then x plus z. So that's x prime plus y quantity times x plus z. Now it doesn't matter whether you write it x y plus x prime z or whether you write it x prime y plus x z. If you write it this way, then you're going to get same idea. You're going to get x prime plus z, uh, x prime plus z quantity times x plus y. So notice that here you have x prime plus z, here you have x prime plus y. It doesn't really matter. However, it's written is what you get, and it's true either way. So don't let that freak you out. Okay. So the the underlines just tell you what to mean and it's just one way of trying to keep it organized so you don't so you don't mix up the so you don't wind up with x prime z up here and x xy here that's all you don't have to use the lines if it confuses you just skip them but the idea is the y this this x prime goes with this y this x goes with this z so then that makes it x prime plus y quantity times x plus z that's all. And you're always looking, and the construct you're looking for here is 
x prime something plus x something. So you have to have an x prime and an x. Or you could have, you could, you could certainly have the same thing. You could have uh, y prime w plus y q. And that would be, then that would be y prime plus q quantity times y plus w. And again, we just draw the little lines here to keep it straight. Like that. So it would always be the the inside terms and the outside terms paired as far as well, ending. I mean, you could equally, you could also write it y prime w plus qy. Same thing. It's still going to be equal to this. Because remember, the order doesn't matter. And that's 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 our we have that from we have that from. So what you're saying is you have to pair the y prime, the x prime or the q prime with the other other um with the other letter in the other pair. You can't yeah. pair it with y, you need to pair it with the other um letter. Yeah, and it can also be you can also have x. Uh, Wy plus x prime um, yz. Well, here you'd probably factor out the y. Well, let's say y prime z. Well, whatever. And in this case, we do the x with the, this, and we do the x with this. So you you'd wind up with x plus y prime z quantity times x prime plus wy. No, that just confused me right there. Why? Why is that confusing? So let's um, let, let's let w y equal uh, q and uh, y prime z equal uh, equal uh, r. Then you could write that x q plus x prime r equals, and then 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 you'd write x. Uh, x r. plus r times yeah. x prime plus q. And then you can substitute these back in and you'd have this. Oh, okay. Right? Yes. All right. Yeah, so, no, go ahead. I'll see. So you can only do it in uh, of the ending in pairs of two, like the wy used as a one variable. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're asking, but but well, it, with so the x uh, y uh, x w y, uh, the, with the three uh, terms here, um, I guess I was thinking of uh, the way I was thinking of the the x and the y and the y and the y prime and the x and the you could do you, in this case you could use y and y prime. Yes, you could you could write this. This could also be done with the y prime, and you'd have y plus x prime z quantity times y uh, prime uh, plus x w. That's also you could either one of these would be okay. And and remember, you could also have you could have y prime w plus y prime z plus y q and you could write that you could factor out the y prime you'd have w plus z plus y q and then you could do y times this and y prime times that which would give you y prime plus q quantity times y plus w plus z Also completely legal. Does that make sense? Um, I'm still absorbing it. It, it kind, of, kind of does, but I, I just need to look at it a little bit more and see what I'm... Uh... Well, remember, it's just the same as y prime 
um, y prime x plus yz, where x equals w plus z and z equals q. I'll make that, make that. Uh, so with that one, you just y. distribute the one before the y prime out. Well, I just factored the yep. y prime out. So y prime times w plus c. And then this quantity w plus c could just be an x and this q could be a r. And that just is y prime x plus y r, which would obviously equal y prime plus r quantity times y plus x. And then you substitute back in for r and x. r is just r is just uh, x is just w plus c so that's w plus z here instead of r and x is just uh, q i am starting to see it okay all right so it takes a, it takes a while playing with these for sure no question about it all right so let's let's uh, so one of the things to keep in mind, so we've talked about the SOP and the POS canonical forms and four. Uh, the word canonical just means, you know, these are our standard, you know, codified, set in stone, you know, forms. There are plenty of other forms, but these are the two that are kind of our, our you know, that are sort of the basis. Okay. And so any logic expression can be put in one of these canonical forms as well as other forms. Every truth table can be represented in an, as an, either an SOP or an S, or a POS form, as well as other forms as well. You can always convert from one form to the other, from SOP to POS or from POS to SOP. Now, you might not actually be able to do it because it might be too hard, but it's possible. It's just that you, know, you, might, you might struggle with it. But the good news is there are computer-based tools that will do it for you. So you can always switch. And these forms can be used to prove two sides are equal. If you put uh, both sides in the SOP form, then you should be able to see that they're equal. Uh, you can represent a hardware two-layer net. It can always be done in and or with a set of input AND gates and one output AND gate, a one sorry, one output OR gate, or it can be done with a set of input OR gates and one output AND gate. You can also do it in NAN NAN and NOR NOR. You can use exclusive OR gates as well. There are an entire, you can do the entire logic design course using exclusive OR gates in canonical form. So those, that's the other canonical form, but we're doing it with SOP and POS. And you can always have a degenerative term, which is just a single variable. In which case you wouldn't have the input gate, the single variable would just go in directly. Okay, so uh, so remember your your SOP form would look like this, and your POS form would look like this, or at least. And this is just an arbitrary example. So remember, we call we call the SO we call the the AND terms we use the word product, and the SUM terms we use the word uh, the OR terms we use the word SUM implying ORing. So multiplication, we're, we're using, we're, that, that's used to represent ANDing and addition is used to represent ORing. There is actually no such thing as multiplication and addition in, in, in switching logic. We're just using those words, we're stealing those words from normal, normal algebra to mean in the case of multiplication, ANDing, and in the case of ORing, addition. So when we write A times C prime times D, we're really saying and A, C prime and D together. And here when we add A prime B and D, we're, we're just saying or A prime with B and D. So, our, so this SOP stands for sum of products. So what we're doing, we're summing up our product terms. So our product terms are and terms here and we're, and we're ORing them together. So we're, we're oring up the ands, and here we're anding up the ors. So SOP has an input layer of and gates and an output or gate, single output or gate, and the POS form has a, a layer of input or gates and a single output and gate, just like 
this. Okay, let's do an example. Let's say we have A, C, D plus A prime, B prime, D plus A prime, B, C, and uh, plus A, C prime, D prime. And we want to uh, change this uh, into POS form. So it's in SOP form now. It's in sum of products form. These are product terms and they're being summed up. These are and terms, they're being ORed together. That's what we mean when we say sum of products. <coughs> Which is, you know, it, it's confusing. I mean, they made you, it about as confusing as they could. Would you just um, kind of group them around the, uh, the OR terms? On each side of the OR terms, like grouping them as a product or as a end? No, so what we're going to do, we're going to use our theorems. And for this, the first thing you do, you want to see if you can simplify any terms. Can you combine any terms? Can you simplify any terms? And it turns out um, that we really can't do much in that regard. We can't really combine any terms. We can't simplify any terms. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look at, uh, so we want to go back to our theorems. We want to use one of our we first consider our simplification laws. Well, first you consider the trivial laws, but I don't see anything there. Then, then we want to consider the simplification laws. Can we, can, we, uh, can we combine terms? Can we eliminate a literal? Can we eliminate a term? Or can we eliminate a consensus term? We said we'd kind of leave these out of the discussion for the time being and then bring them back in when we do KMAPs in chapter five. So we'll do that. So we, we're not going to worry about the consensus term. So, and then once we check all these simplification terms, if we can't use any of these, then we're gonna look at our possible using our conversion laws. Either the first distributed law, second distributed law, or multiplying and factoring. Well, so in this case, what are we gonna do? Well, if we look at them, what we, there's one variable we have, we see in every term, right? We have an A in every single term. So one of the things we can do is we can group our, we can group our, A's and factor out an A uh, from A, C, D and A, C prime, D prime. And we can factor out an A prime from B prime, D and B, C. And when we do that, we can use the first distributed law and factor that out. And we get, we get this. Now we have something like A, Q plus A prime, R. We can use the multiplying and factoring theorem. And we can apply it to this once, and then we can apply it also to this. So apply it twice to the two different parts. Well, sorry, I, I, that was confusing. We're, we're gonna first we're gonna we're, first we're just gonna apply it to the to the using the a and the a prime, and then we can go back and we can we may we can probably apply it again, or we can actually apply it on the inside of here if we really wanted to. And I think that's what we did. Uh, yeah. So we applied it inside here using C and C prime, or you can use D and D prime. And we applied it inside here using B prime and B. So this would be um, C plus D prime quantity times C prime plus D quantity here, still multiplied by A. And here we have A prime times B plus D quantity times B prime plus C. So we applied the M and F inside here and inside here. And now we're gonna apply it one more time with A and A prime. And that's gonna give us this, A plus this quantity times that. And uh, yeah, A plus these two multiplied together and A plus these two multiplied together, and then this quantity times that quantity. So uh, now you can use, now you have A, now you have something that looks very much like uh, X plus Y, Z in here, and you have something that looks like X plus Y, Z in here, where here are the X is an A prime, here are the X is an A, and here are the Y is C plus D prime, and the Z is C prime plus D, and here are the Y is, uh, B plus D and the Z is B prime plus C. So we apply the second distributive law two times, once to this part and once to that part. 
and we get a plus b prime plus c quantity times a plus b plus d quantity times a prime plus c plus d prime times quantity a prime plus c prime plus d. And now we have switched our POS, our, our SOP form into a POS form. So what you should do is, is take a little bit of time and look through these and see, it, see if it makes sense. I'll, I'll post these. Uh, I don't think I put these on Blackboard, but I, I will do that. Uh, I'll do that. Well, this one I think is on Blackboard. Uh, I haven't put five on yet, but I'll do that. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that example? Uh Professor, I had a question. Uh, sure. How much will we be seeing this? Or will this be something that we will be doing a lot? Or is it only in this section? So, right so again, I, I've kind of talked about this before. So this, this switching algebra allows you to manipulate logic expressions. And you need to have some facility, some ability to do this. Uh, you don't have to be an expert, but you do have to have some, some basic ideas about how you could approach these things. Um, and you might struggle, but th this is not a particularly easy one. This is, say, somewhat challenging. Uh, but, but simpler ones you should definitely be able to do. This one you might struggle a little bit with, and you might have to you know, sit and work through it for, you know, you might spend 30 minutes on it, kind of trying different things and seeing if you could get it figured out. Um, so yeah, this is something you need to work on. So don't blow it off because you need to have, you need to be able to do these, do some basic manipulations. Again, I, if you get to the point where this would be easy for you to do, you, you're probably, you're probably, uh, you probably have more ability than, than, I mean, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that, but but uh, you probably didn't have to spend that much time. But if you get to the point where you can do this, but it's really hard for you, that's probably okay. And on a test, I probably wouldn't give you one this difficult. I'd probably give you one easier, where maybe you could eliminate a term and then it would be easier to do. So these examples in the note sets are more difficult than say what I expect you to have the ability to do easily anyway. I mean, I'd love it if you, could, if you can do it, but, and if you can do it easily all the more, that's great. But, it, but these usually are tricky. All right, let's do, um, let's do some factoring. So here we just wanna, uh, we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, so we factory get four product terms. So we're starting with A prime, B prime, C prime, A prime, D prime, A, B, C prime, and A, D. Okay, so what? So the first thing to do is inspect it to see if there's anything you can use the the simplification theorems on. Again, the these the S one, two, three, or four. And again, I said we wouldn't really force you to use S four. So S one, two, or three. Well, so maybe we don't maybe we don't see any. Let's see that did I do that? Uh, okay, example one. Professor, this slide is on Blackboard. These uh, um PowerPoint. Yeah, I think so. Let me uh we'll check here and be sure. Uh, so yeah, chapter four. Chapter one sort of includes one, two, and three, but yeah, is this yeah, chapter four is there. Mm-hmm. And I think I think it's the same. I, I don't think I have to update it. Uh, yeah, pretty sure it's the same. All right. Uh, let's see. Chapter five. All right. So let's. So let's do, we'll do uh, O2, yeah, okay. So let's go through this one. Same thing. So if you look at this, you can see 
every term, uh, we have an A or an A prime in every term. So we, we probably want to organize it somewhat around the, the A variable. So uh, in this case, um, yeah, so in this case, we have A prime, B prime, C prime, plus A prime, D prime, plus A, B, C prime, plus A, D. So we, we can't really simplify or combine anything, but what we can do is we can factor the A prime out of this, which gives us B prime, C prime, plus D prime. And we can factor the A out of here, A times uh, B, C prime, plus D, like this. We factor out the C prime. Oh, well, okay, I did a little bit differently. <laughs> but you can, you can also do it the other way. So let me, let me just work through that. So uh, let me copy this down. I'll do it, I'll do it this way. Uh, so here's the original expression, A prime, B prime, C prime, plus A prime, B prime, plus A, B, C prime, plus A, D. Okay, let me switch. And Okay, so here's our original expression. So the first thing, one way to do this, we do factor out the A prime, A prime times B prime, C prime plus D prime, plus A times B, C prime plus D. All right, everybody see how that's pretty doable? You can also, um, yeah, the other way we did it, we grouped it with C prime, uh, we factored out the C prime of these two terms and the D and the, and the, no, I don't know what we did down there anyway, but this, so this is probably what I did the first step. And then now I'm left with this group in here, this group in here. So I can, I can apply the, the, the second distributive law to this and the second distributive law again to this. And then I can use the M and F for the whole thing, M and F, because I have an, a prime and an A. A prime times something plus A, A times something. So let's do the second distributive law first. So we wind up with A prime times D prime plus B prime quantity times D prime plus C prime. And then all this plus A times D plus B quantity times D plus C prime. All right, so now, now I've used the second distributive law two times, once in here, once in here, and expanded that. Now I'm gonna use M and F because now I have, uh, now I have, if you let this be, I don't Professor. know. Yeah? Uh, when you're using, when you're saying using the distributive law, using the conversion <laughs> law on the far right side. Okay. So what I'm what I'm using here, I'm using the second distributive law on the, on b prime c prime plus d prime. If you go back to the if we go back to uh, yes, sir. I'm just wondering if it's the one that's under the conversion laws because it says simplification, trivial, and conversion. Okay, so yes, it is the one under the conversion law. Okay, the, oh, the multiplier right. factoring. We're using we're using no, we're using c two. And so then you're going to go back and use the top one. For yeah, trivial so, loss. so 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 we have three conversion laws c1 c2 and c3 c1 is the first distributive law c2 is the second distributive law and c3 is multiplying and factoring it's and it has you know it's essential these are identical essentially okay so okay so so what i did is i used i used c2 C2, and then I'm going to use C3 on the whole thing. Okay. So I applied C2 here. Remember, C2 is X plus YZ. So I write that out. And now, how am I going to apply it? Equals X plus Y times X plus Z. So I want to apply it in this direction. I want to apply it first to this quantity. And then I'm going to use the same law and apply it separately to this quantity. In both cases, I'm going from this form to this form. 
Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is what I get. And now that I have this, now I'm going to use C3. C3 is, uh, is X, Y plus X prime Z equals X plus Z quantity times X prime plus Y. And I'm going to apply it in this direction. And I'm going to apply it to this whole thing using A prime. X, X is going to be A prime. D prime, the quantity D prime plus B prime times the quantity D prime plus C prime is going to be Y. So this is going to be Y. This is going to be X. And this is going to be Z. And so that's going to give me this. That's going to give me A prime plus the quantity over here, D plus B quantity times D plus C prime. And it's all that times A plus this, which is D prime plus B prime times D prime plus C prime. Now, <clears throat> now um, I can do, now I just have to do one more thing. I, I now have this back in the back in this form again, or it's in this form, x plus y z. So I can use c2 again for here, and I can use c2 again for here, but applying it in the same direction, okay? Going from x plus y z to the quantity x plus y times the quantity x plus z. And that's gonna give me, that's gonna give me then a prime plus D plus B quantity times A prime plus D plus C prime times A plus uh, D prime plus B prime times- You're going off the page, Professor. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm out of room. Times, uh, times D, uh, a, a plus D prime plus C prime. So this goes up here. So I have one, two, three, four product, uh, four sum terms and together. So now it's in POS form and it was in SOP form. Okay. So that one's, that one's, that one's a little tricky. And all these, all these can be a little off-putting. So, so this is first distributive law. And here I factored the C out. I don't know why I did that, but I just did it. So I did it a little bit differently. I did the steps in different order here, but you wind up with the same thing. A plus B prime, D prime. Uh, uh, a plus D prime, D prime, A plus C prime, uh, D prime, A prime plus B, D, and A prime plus C prime, D. Uh, professor. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that when you use the second distributive law and you had the X plus Y, Z, it doesn't matter if the X is whether it's a complement or not. You can still use it. Okay. Uh, I, the beginning X. So, so when you use the second distributive law, which is, which is here, x plus y z equals x plus y times x plus z. You don't care about, you know, the, yeah, you can use this. So the fact that my x, my, it, well, the fact that I have, um, so I'm, what I'm doing, I'm using it, uh, let's see, the, uh, yeah. So we wound up with, um, Right, so the first, so let's just go over it again. So the first thing we did, we factored the A prime out. A prime times this quantity plus A times this quantity. And so then, uh, then uh, let's see, I guess, uh, yeah, so sorry, I'm missing a plus here. So we, we had, 
so when we did this, we used the we used with the, oh the, the sorry no that's correct I I'm going back and getting myself confused. So when we did this, we had a times this and a a prime times this a times this. The first thing we did, we just dealt with this quantity inside here, and we used the second distributive law. So remember that the second distributive law is x plus y z equals the quantity x plus y times x plus z. Now, if x is a prime, then that's fine. These just become primes. If y is a prime, these just become primes. Doesn't, doesn't mean you can't use it. But when you use the when you use the multiplying and factoring C3, you have to have an A prime and an A in order to use that. Because okay. that uh, so, so does that also mean that the uh, for three you can have two X primes or A primes, and then as long as you have Y Z. Uh, yes, Maybe. right, right. So so for the first distributive law, so again, for the first distributive law, you have X plus Y Z equals X plus Y times X plus Z. If you have X prime plus Y Z then you just have x prime plus y quantity times x prime plus z. That's fine. But when you're using the multiply, so this is, this is, this is C2, okay? Second distributive law. But if you use the multiplying and factoring, then, then you have x, y plus x prime z equals x plus z, quantity times x prime plus y. So here you do have to have an x and an x prime. And does it also mean like the beginning x can also be prime as long as you have that primed x on the right side? If this, if this is prime, this has to be not prime to use okay. C3. If they're both prime, then if they're both, if you had x prime y plus x prime z, then you would use the first distributive law, c1, and you'd factor out x prime and you'd have x prime times y plus z. So let's say we let's say we have this. Let's say we have x prime y plus x prime z. And we want it, that's in SOP form. And we want to put it in POS form. So we want to go to POS. Okay. Well, we just use the C1, factor out the X prime, and now we have X prime times Y plus Z. This is now in POS form. Because this is a degenerative case of a single variable. And then here you have an, an, an OR term. So this would look like one OR gate. And that would be y and z. And then you'd have x prime here. And they would both be going into an output AND gate. And this would be f or whatever. So if you really feel like you have to have a gate here, you can put a gate. And you can have two inputs and tie them together and put x prime into both. And sometimes we do this when we want to make sure that the timing of the signals arriving here is always the same. So we might actually put a gate in here because we don't want, we don't want that, this X getting there sooner than the output of this gate. But that varies, but you might, might have to do that. <coughs> so this would be represented as X anded with, y or with z. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. OK. I think the only thing is like when the complements can become relevant or irrelevant. So they're, they're, they're relevant when you, when you want to use the multiplying and factoring theorem, C3. OK, and the rest of them, it could just be whatever. They could be complemented or not. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the multiplying and factoring theorem, it's also somewhat relevant on the consensus theorem too. All right. 
Okay, we'll look at this. So multiply it out to tame a sum of, sum of products. Uh, some of these are, yeah. Let's see, uh, I think some of these are, these may be more frustrating than not. Let's see if we can do this, uh, K prime M, K prime M, L plus M. And did I actually, yeah, I'm not sure I actually uh, did that. Let me do, yeah, let me do this. I think, yeah, okay. So, okay, so let's let's do these simplifications because we, we've done some of these. Um, well, maybe we, well, let's do one of these because we didn't do one yet. Okay, so now what form are these in? They're all in the same form. POS. They're all in POS. So let's 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 see if we can multiply generate uh, SOP form. Okay, so here we have k prime plus m prime plus n, k prime plus m, l plus m prime plus n prime, k prime plus l plus m, and m plus n. All right. So the first thing we can do is look and see if we see, you know, see anywhere we can. You know we can simplify things, uh, and for that we're looking at S one, S two, S three, and S four. So, um, so I don't really see K prime plus M. Okay, so the good news is here we have a K prime plus M, and here we have a K prime plus L plus M. So. We can use, if we go back to our simplification theorems, right here, S, we can eliminate a term with S3, XY plus X equals X, or in this case, X plus Y times X equals X. So let's, let's see how that applies here. Okay, so, so I'm gonna change papers. Okay, uh, let's see. I've got to bring the other up first, though. Um, let me write this out. So, K, oh, actually, if I did if I do this, I can do that. Yeah, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, Now I'll bring this out. Okay, so the original problem was K prime plus M prime plus N times, and I'm going to change the order. So I'll put uh, I'll put um, well, I'll put the K prime plus M, and then that's times <clears throat> K prime plus M plus L. And then, um, uh, and then I didn't. Uh, then, then I have to have L plus M prime plus N prime, and finally, M plus N. Now, if you see this, K prime plus M, K prime plus M plus L, that is the same as X times uh, X plus Y. And by our uh, by by S three, this just equals x. So if I let k prime plus m be x and k k prime plus m plus l be x plus y, then I could just drop this term and I'm just left with k prime plus m, which which is just the x. We're applying it in this direction. Okay, so let's rewrite it now. Uh, K prime plus M prime plus N times K prime plus M. This term is gone. L plus M prime plus N prime and M plus N. Let me just double check and make sure that's all good. K prime plus L plus, uh, uh, yeah, that one I deleted. Uh, L plus M prime plus N, L plus M prime plus N prime. K prime plus M and K prime plus M prime plus M, K prime plus M prime plus M. Yes, okay. So now we have this. Now we can inspect this again, see if we have anything. Do we have an M plus an N anywhere? 
No, we have an M plus K prime, but that won't work. We have an M prime, we have an M prime. All right, and here we have a K prime plus M prime plus N. Now, you can use uh, S2. We go back here and do S2. We can use S2, eliminate a literal. X plus X prime, Y equals X plus Y. We drop, we drop that X prime. Or here, X times X prime plus Y equals X, Y. We drop the X prime. All right, so let's see how that applies. Actually, let me, I'll stick on this and uh, let me go back to here. Is this, our pencil is a capital C with five? Yeah, five? yeah. But you capitalize it. You capitalize it, okay. right. So we get ready for Yeah, okay. And tomorrow. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right, so now we're back to here. So let's use, let's use that. So notice we have, we have a K prime and a K prime. We have an M and an M prime. And then we don't really care about the N, it just kind of, it's additional. So we can use the, we can use the X times X plus Y, uh, sorry, X, uh, uh, X plus, sorry, uh, we have a X plus, um, yeah, so, well, let, let me, let me write that theorem. So, so the, so that theorem is the quantity X plus Y times uh, X prime plus Y times X equals uh, X plus Which theorem are you writing now right now? What's that? Which one are you writing now right now? C uh, two. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, S two. The simplification. S2? Yeah, S two. S two is X plus X prime Y equals X plus Y. Yeah. I just wrote the X over here. You can put it there if you want. Same thing. X times X prime plus Y equals X plus Y. That's S2. And we're applying it in this direction, okay? So these this one takes a little bit of, of seeing, but here we have, here we have uh, the K prime plus M, K prime plus M prime plus N. And so, uh, the 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 you can, what you can get rid of is you can get rid of the m prime but you know what i'm i'm i think i'm just going to leave it for now because that, that's just going to be more confusing than anything. professor isn't it equal to x y and not x plus y because it looks like the dual is the actual theorem for s2 it says oh. x times oh. x prime yeah it is x y i'm sorry yes thank you x y yeah, it's because it, it's x times this goes away, and then it's x times y equals x y. Yeah. All right. Let's. Well, this is confusing. Uh, so rather than do this, I, I'm just going to skip it. It won't make that much difference. Uh, you can still kind of do it. Okay. So let's let's rewrite where we are. We're at k prime plus m prime plus n times k prime plus m times L plus M prime plus N prime times M plus N. All right, so now, uh, so let's look and see what we could do. Um, and so we have, so we have an M in every term. Uh, we don't have Ks in every term. We don't have Ns in every term. We have n's in every term except this one, but we don't have one there. So let's just, since we have k's in every term, let's let's use the k. So so we have, so here we have k prime plus m prime plus n times k prime plus m. Now we'll deal with that in a minute. But here we have uh, we have uh, uh, oh sorry. We're using M primes. Let me, I, I want to rewrite these so it makes sense. And I thought it was K, but it's M. So we, we have an M prime here. 
We have an M prime there. We have an M here and an M there. So we're going to rewrite it so we have our M primes together. And I'm going to put them first. So we have M prime plus K prime plus N. And here we have, using this term, M prime plus L plus N prime. And then if we do the other one, we have two M's. We have M plus K prime times M plus N. Now, what we want to do, uh, we're going to use the second distributive law, and that's C2, where we have x plus y quantity times x plus z equals x plus yz. And we're going to apply it in this direction. So here we have our x will be m, our x is m, mm -hmm. our y is k prime, our z is n. And so that's going to give us m plus k prime n over here. And here we have we have an m prime. And this can be this will be our x, this will be our y, this will be our x, and this will be our z. All right, so that's going to give us m prime plus the quantity. k prime plus n times the quantity L plus n prime. So now we have this term times that term. Okay. Now we have we have a pr m prime here and an m here. So now we're set up for C3, multiplying and factoring because we do have a M prime and a non M prime. So that's the same as, remember C3 is uh, X prime plus Y quantity times, and, and we have, these are times each other, X prime Y plus uh, X plus Z. And that's gonna give us X prime z plus xy. And we're applying it in this direction. All right. <clears throat> so then we have m, and we draw our little funny lines with the km. And we have this m, the non-prime m, with this. So that's going to be m prime times k prime n plus M times K prime plus N quantity times L plus N prime. And now we can, we can multiply, we can bring our multiply, use the C1, the first distributive law, M prime times this. So we have M prime K prime N Really, we just take off the parentheses here. Here we use the first distributive law. We do m times k prime plus n uh, time. Uh, yeah, uh, m times k prime plus m times n. Um, yeah, we need okay before we do this we we need to uh we need to use we need to work on the inside of here we have an n and an n prime so we can use inside of here we can use the multiplying and factoring theorem and then we can multiply by the m so let's do that first because otherwise we're going to have a problem so when we do that we get n uh n prime uh k prime plus n L quantity mm -hmm. times M. And so then that gives us so let's rewrite that. So then we have M prime K prime N plus, and I'll I'll do this again. So M times this, which is N prime K prime plus N L. Put the M, now we use the first distributive law and put this in here. We get M prime 
k prime n plus m n prime k prime plus m n l. And now we have one, two, three product terms. So it's in POS form, or sorry, it's in SOP form. So we went from, we went from our POS form in one, two, three, four, well, we had five terms originally. So if we go back to our here, And we pull it down here. So we have the we have one, two, three, four, five terms, and now we have the three terms in SOP. So we started with five terms of POS, and we wound up with three terms of SOP. And and that's not unusual. You typically wind up with a different number of terms. So so these problems are kind of tricky, and they can be challenging to do. Uh, so I, I wouldn't expect you, I mean, I would expect you to struggle through these basically. Uh, and then uh, I think we'll stop because we're out of time, but basically uh, we'll simplify these expressions. Uh, you, can, you can look at these. So for instance, uh, xy plus x prime y z prime plus y z. Uh, so this one, you can factor out a Y. When you factor out the Y, then you have an X, uh, you have a Z term, a Z prime and an X term. And uh, so the, the, well, if you just look at this, you have an X, Y here, you can take out the X prime because of the uh, S2. And you can take out the Z because of S2. The z prime here, so you wind up with a y, and you can with with a y you can use s three and eliminate x y and y z, and you wind up with just a y. Or you can factor out the y, and you can see that you have x or x prime, z prime, or z. And if you think about it, if if you you have the case where, so let's write that. I'll show you that that's really true even though it looks like it's bogus. So let me do that. So if, you, if we write that, this xy plus x prime yz prime plus uh, yz. So if I factor out the y, y times x plus x prime z prime plus y. Okay, now you just, it's a little harder to see here, but but if you uh, if you think about this, so uh, it, we have the we have the the x plus um, x prime uh, z equals uh, x plus z. Okay, so that's that's s two. If we take this, you can get rid of the x prime, and then if you put it in the form of y plus uh, x prime uh, z, uh, let's see, sorry, I, I just copied some, I, I, this should be a z here. We took the y out, so plus z. Or you put it in the form of z plus x prime z prime, you can drop out the z prime. It turns out you can just get rid of this term completely. But if you think about it, let's, let's think about it so it makes sense to you. So if you have y times x plus x prime z prime plus z, if x is one, then this, this whole thing is gonna be one regardless of z, right? If z is one, this whole thing, because z is one here, this whole thing is gonna be one because it's one or something or something. Well, one with anything is always, or with anything is always a one. So if x is one, it's a one. If z is one, it's a one. So now we have, we have, four cases. We have the case where x is one and x is one. Well, we have a case where they're both zero. We have a case where x is one and z is zero. x is zero and z is one. And when they're both one. Well, if they're both one, it's obviously one. If z is one, it's one. If x is one, it's one. 
So the only case you have to worry about is when they're both zero, what is it then? Well, if they're both zero, x prime is one and z prime is one. So this just turns out to be one, no matter how you slice it. And that means that it's y anded with one, which is just y. Does that make sense? Um, why, why x and y both are zero, uh, both are one, but it is equal to z one. Uh, I didn't understand the question. Oh, uh, just the last one. When x and y, x and z are both one, how it turn turn turns out to one? Well, so. So if you have if you have x ordered with z, if either one of those is one, this quantity will always be one, right? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the only case where you have to think about it a little bit is when what happens when they're both zero. Well, when they're both zero, x prime z prime turns out to be one because that's one ended with one. Remember, if x equals zero, x prime equals one. And if z equals zero, z prime equals one. So in the case where they're both zero, x prime, z prime is one. And it was one, so it's one. So this quantity is either one or one or one, depending on the combinations of x and z. But one of these variables will always be one for all possible combinations. In this case, you have this term. Each term will be, x will be one when x is one, z will be one whenever z is one, and x prime z prime will be one whenever they're both zero. All right, so, so it can be, uh, so as you see, these can be challenging. Some of these are easier than others. Um, and some of them, some of them, some of them could be very difficult. Uh, so part of the idea was, I guess, to give you a sense of the difficulty, but mostly um, <coughs> I'll give you problems that'll be a lot simpler. And you can see these others. Uh, I'm not gonna go through them all now. This one just results to one. It's always one, just the constant one. This is a little more challenging. This takes some work, <laughs> but you start with the B prime EF, you have a B prime EF here, so this term goes away. And um, I think these two terms, you have an A prime B, C, D, and an A prime B, C prime D. These two combine the A prime B, D. And um, so you're left with A prime B, D uh, and B prime EF, because you've dropped this term, and these two combined, and so you just have uh, this term, the C, D, E prime, G. And the A prime, D, E, F, uh, yeah, I forget what happened to it. Uh, but yes, B, E, F, yeah, anyway. That's, that's, the, that's the result. I forget, I have to think about it in a minute. But uh, yeah. So these are all a little tricky, but you can sit and think through these. Okay, um, so let me go back here. All right, so hopefully you get the idea. So, so these, are, these are challenging. Uh, like I say, most students really struggle with switching algebra uh, because it's, it's tricky. Uh, even for me, when I've done these things a zillion times, uh, like, like the last one there and the last that we just looked at, that D, I have to sit there and work that out on the paper myself and scratch my head a little bit. It takes a minute to get through it just because it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's challenging. It's, it's, you know, it takes a lot of uh, sort of retraining yourself to think about uh, switching algebra very differently than you do normal algebra. But if you, if you just remember, all we have are these, are the theorems. So, so these, these theorems, this list right here, this is what you want to look at. Uh, all we have, and it's really just the S, S, 
one, two, three, and four, and C one, two, three that you need to, to focus on. These other ones are pretty straightforward. And we, we don't use De Morgan's laws uh, when we do this simplification, when we do conversion from SOP to POS. We do use De Morgan's laws when we want to change the form of, of our expression from, say, SOP to NAN NAN or POS to, to NOR NOR. And we'll show you how to do that down the road. But, uh, but switching algebra is a little tricky, no doubt about it. So uh, what I encourage you to do is not to, not to, you know, not to let it freak you out, but just to try as best you can. And, and I'll, give you some, I'll give you some simpler problems. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of tricks. Uh, I'll cover those on Friday. All right, any questions? We've gone a little bit over. And the good news is uh, we're gonna be back in class on uh, next week. It looks like we are gonna be in person. And I think you'll find- Oh, you got the news? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I'll show you. It's, uh, I'll show you the message actually. Um, so it's really, it's kind of exciting. Yeah, it is. So here's the message they sent out. Um, and what they said is, they talked about the fact the numbers are going down, blah, 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 blah. Uh, given these data, we believe that it is appropriate to proceed with ending our modified course delivery period on September 12th as planned. Face-to-face -face instruction components will begin for all traditional in-person and hybrid courses starting on Monday, September 13th. So there we are. So, and they said, uh, we uh, they're gonna put up a, uh, uh, so they do recommend you wear a mask. Uh, and if you think you might've been exposed to COVID, then you should get tested. Uh, use UTSA's mandatory testing program begins Monday um, for students, faculty, and staff who meet specific criteria. Uh, so you should, look, you should look at this at the testing program criteria. Uh, and if you need to get tested, get tested. Uh, I forget what all the things are. And hopefully most of you have been vaccinated. And they strongly encourage to wear a mask. They're not mandating masks. I, I will wear my mask, except when I'm lecturing, I'll take it off, but I'll wear it the rest of the time uh, just to be safe. Although I've been, had COVID, doubly vaccinated. I, th I probably had Delta too, for that matter, but I, I tested uh, multiple times when I had COVID and I saw the titers actually go down using the real-time reverse transcriptase PCR testing. So, you know, really good. One of my friends owns a lab, so. Um, he became a millionaire during COVID. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Multiple millionaire. So he also took a lot of risk. He invested, um, he raised, I don't know, $3 million and bought all this equipment with no, no assurance that he would get it back. <laughs> and so took a lot of risk, but he's going to make a lot of money because his company's being bought. Pretty amazing. Uh, so yeah, so I will see you in class. Well, well, I'll see you on Zoom on Friday, but next Monday in class. I'm excited about that. Hopefully nothing will happen in the meantime. We may wind up having another spike and going back to online. We'll see. Hopefully not. All right. Any last minute questions? Uh, yes, sir. I have a question. For me, yeah. the the retake never opened. Like okay. I couldn't. I I've been checking since last week, and and I I can't take them. Okay. So remember, it'll show. It won't show that the due date has changed. Oh yeah, yeah. It does. It hasn't changed. It just says retake has expired, and it hasn't changed since last week. It just says that. Okay. Well, let me see. Let me just mess with it right now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let me pull up this. Let's see. If I can do this. Mm, let's see. Um. Okay, home page, again, and then, okay, I'll share my screen. Okay, design. Okay, grade book, component. Um, See, break component quiz. So, which one do you do you need retakes for? Uh, quiz one. Okay. I think the other ones are still open. I'm not sure. Okay. 
I may not have reset quiz one. I wasn't sure about that one. I thought everybody. Oh, Professor Morton. Yeah. Uh, this is Gerardo. I'm, I'm the new student that uh, came to the class uh, mm -hmm. a, a week after. Um, for me, it will be the same for, for the quiz. Should I take it also? Yeah. Yeah, you should have retakes all set up. Okay. So yeah, as please. of starting today, and we'll go all the way till Saturday. And okay. Say 9 p.m. or something. And okay. you should get a notification. Yeah, I don't, have, right. a, I don't have a retake for quiz one for quiz one either it's okay so, so everybody just got updated for quiz one. Oh, okay yeah. just got the email and it's processing yep okay so now you're good so everybody should have quiz one and it looks like i see scores for most people I only see two people with z uh, two people with zeros, three people with zeros. All right. All uh, right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We will see you guys on Friday then. So don't don't freak out over switching algebra. I know I know it, it is really upsetting to a lot of people because it's like oh my god I can't understand this at all. I'm I'll give you some on Friday I'll give you some easy problems. How about that? <laughs> It'll Sounds make you It'll make you feel a little better. We, I, I, I probably shouldn't start with the hard problems because um, <clears throat> they're very intimidating. You know, hell, even for me, they're a little intimidating. I mean, I know I can do them because I've done them, but, but even when I do them again and I haven't looked at it for a minute, you know, I, I have to sit there and scratch my head. And of course, it's real easy to leave off, uh, you know, uh, you know, an apostrophe or not. So you have to be really careful when you work through them. All right, we'll see you Friday. We'll do some easy problems Friday and we'll start on chapter five. All right, have a good day, guys.